Assalamu alaikum semua. Alright, for today we will be covering uh, 17G from your textbook, uh, which is uh, titled Further Venn Diagrams. Right? Okay, so this is on your textbook, page uh, 533. Right? Okay, so they start off saying that uh, a Venn diagram, you know, is useful, right? When you want to calculate probabilities and stuff. So the numbers inside, usually we put it as either the probability or we put it as the quantity. Okay, of that particular group. Okay. So now they ask us, uh, wouldn't it be better if we try to work outwards? Okay, so let, let's take a look what this working outwards mean. Okay, so I need you to look at uh, example 17.14. Right? Okay, so let's uh, read together. You can take out your book. Okay, in a class of 32, 19 have a bicycle, 21 have a mobile phone, and 16 have a laptop computer. So now we are talking about three different sets. Okay, so in our Venn diagram, we will have to end up drawing three different circles. Okay, and then further information are given. Eleven have both a bike and a phone. Twelve have both a phone and a laptop, and six have both a bike and a laptop. Right, and then two have none of these objects. How many people have a bike, a phone, and a laptop? Right. Okay, so uh, I'll draw up the Venn diagram first. Okay, in the meantime, I want you to uh, try to digest this image. Alright, so welcome back. Okay, so we have drawn our Venn diagram over here. Okay, so uh, what we have here is a Venn diagram with three circles. Okay, representing the three different sets. Okay, over here, we have the set of bicycles. Okay, over here, the set of those who own phones. And then the last one are those who own the laptops. Okay, over here. Okay. They do remember to include the two over here, okay. the two students who do not, uh, who have none of these objects. Okay. Alright. Uh, since we do not know uh, the number of students who own uh, all three bicycles, phones, and laptops, we put it as x, and it is actually this intersection over here. Alright. Okay. So this is now when you look at page five three four, next page. Okay. Uh, this is they ask us to work upwards. Okay, so what do we mean by work upwards? Okay, is we look at those regions where they own only two items. For example, this part where they own bicycle and phones, or phones and laptops over here, okay, or the laptops and bicycles over here. Okay, so what do we mean by working backwards? Okay, is you look at this region over here. Okay, if uh, they say they mentioned here earlier uh, that if you look at page five three three. The second sentence, 11 have both a bike and a phone. Okay, so this part is bike and a phone. Okay, but this portion here, X, is bike, phone, and laptop. Okay, so if this is bike, phone, and laptop, what is this? Okay, I repeat again. Huh? The whole thing okay, is bike and a phone. This one is bike, phone, and laptop. Okay, so over here, it is what we call strictly bike and phone. Okay, strictly bike and phone, no laptops included. Okay, you can see from the section. Okay, so therefore, it will be 11, take away the X. Okay, whoever who have all three will fall in this region, but those with only bike and phone will fall in this region. Okay, so Total there are 11 students there, so we have to take away the x over here. Okay? Similarly, you will do for the rest. Okay? For this part, it will be 12 in total, but because there is this group which has all three, okay, we have to subtract the x. Okay? For this part, there is 6 in total, and then again, we have to subtract the x. Same reason. Right? Okay? So, we will continue further. Okay? They say continuing, uh, continue. Working outwards, okay. Then they say consider the regions which belong to only one group. That means this part, the one that is on the outside here. Okay, so this portion is only bicycle, only phones, and over here, only laptops. Okay, so again, what we must do is, for example, okay, let's read up. A total of 19 people have a bicycle. Okay, so let's look at bicycle. 19 belongs to this circle. But some of the regions have been occupied. Okay, so that means 
this particular region, let's do a calculation from here. Okay, there's 19 students. Okay, you must subtract this 11 minus x plus. Okay, that's this part. And then you also must subtract the 6 minus x. That's this part. And then don't forget to subtract the x. Okay, that's this part. Okay. Alright. So uh, if we simplify this, okay, we will get 2 minus x. Okay, that's for only by subtract. Okay. Uh, similarly, we'll do likewise for the rest. Okay, using the information given, we will get x minus two over here and x minus two over here. All right. Okay, so I'll leave you to digest this first. Okay, and then I'll get back to do the calculation. Okay. All right. Now we're back. Uh, we are now going to do the calculation part. Okay. So do remember that this Venn diagram okay, represents a total of 32 students okay so uh, what you can see is every single portion of this okay including the two at the bottom here okay has to add up to become 32 okay so that's what they did in the working over there so i'm not going to write the working okay so what they did is they take 2 plus 2 minus x okay plus your 11 minus x plus your x okay and then there's a 6 minus x here there's uh, x minus 2 over here, and then we have uh, 12 minus x, and then 2 over here. Okay, so all these have, have to total up to 32. So you end up uh, solving for x, and then you get x is 3. Therefore, uh, the number of students with uh, laptops, phones, and bicycles is actually 3. Right? So we'll move on to the next example after this. Alright, we're back. We are going to attempt uh, 17.15. Okay. Uh, so it's mentioned if you look at page 534, the bottom part, you see when diagrams are particularly useful when thinking about conditional probability. Okay. So we can use the given information to exclude parts of the Venn diagram that are not relevant. Okay. So uh, for 17.15, okay, they're going to deal with uh, conditional probability. Let's take a look at the question first. Okay, if you look on page 535. Uh, Daniel has 18 toys, 12 are made of plastic, and 13 are red. Okay, two are neither red nor plastic. Okay, Daniel chooses a toy at random. Random. Okay, so uh, the thing is, for us to do probability question, we need the quantity to be inside. Okay, but the thing is, not every quantity is given. Okay, let's take a look what what is given. Uh, we need the center part. That means a toy that is plastic and red. Okay, but we don't have that. Okay, so we start with the intersection first, like the previous question. Okay, we put it x since we don't know. Alright, okay, then we work backwards or working outwards. Okay, since we see 12 are made of plastic, okay, using the same uh, thought process. Okay, since this whole thing is 12, but x has been occupied by here, okay, which is plastic and red, okay, then therefore this part is 12. Take away x, okay, or 12 subtract x, okay, All right, and similarly, you'll do the same 13 are red, so this part, okay, will be 13 take away x, okay, don't forget, there's also two that are neither red nor plastic, so the two should not be here, should not be here, should be outside, okay, so we have done up our Venn diagram, okay, so now let's do a question, they say, find the probability that uh, it is a red plastic toy. Okay, so a red plastic toy okay, will be this one. Okay, so uh, what we know is same like just now, uh, twelve subtract x, okay, plus your x, okay, plus your thirteen minus x, okay, plus two. Don't forget. Must be 18 because Daniel has 18 toys. Right? Okay. So solving for this, okay, you will get that x is 9. Since there are 9 toys that are plastic and red, or a red plastic toy, okay, the probability of getting a red plastic toy would be red plastic toy. 
will be 9 out of 18, which will give you half. Right? Okay, so uh, I'll need to erase this part first okay, before we go into part B. I'll come back. Now we are going to do part B. Uh, if it is a red toy, if it is a red toy, okay, find the probability that it is plastic. Okay, so now the word, the phrase, if it is a red toy, it is actually an indication of a conditional probability. That means you know that it is a red toy, or given that it is a red toy. Okay, so it's a conditional probability kind of question. Okay, so now since they said that if it is a red toy, that means we can focus only on the red section. Okay, so uh, since we have found out that x is actually 9, okay, uh, this particular portion will now be 13 minus 9 will be 4. So this part will be 4. Okay, and this part will be uh, x, right? So it's just 9. Okay, so we know that a red toy has only 13 of them. Okay. It may be a plastic or it may be a non-plastic. Okay, but in total there are nine. Uh, sorry, thirteen red toys. Okay, so if they want to know whether it is plastic, you just focus on this part, which is nine. Okay, probability okay, of plastic. Okay, given that it is a red toy, okay, will be nine out of total of. Okay. So we don't really have to do the conditional probability formula where we find the intersection, divided by the uh, probability of it being red and stuff, we don't have to do that. We just look at the Venn diagram and the Venn diagram tells us everything we need to know about uh, it being a red toy given that it is actually, sorry, uh, given that it's actually a red toy, what's the probability of it, it being a plastic toy? Alright, okay, so uh, this is that when calculating conditional probabilities, it's often easier to use brand diagrams rather than the formula that you learned, like I said earlier as well. Okay, so in the previous two examples, we use brand diagrams to represent frequencies. Okay, but it can also represent probabilities. That means we can put in probabilities inside them. Okay, All right. So uh, we'll look at examples seventeen point sixteen after this. Okay. All right. So we're back. Uh, we are now going to do uh, work example seventeen point sixteen. Okay, on page five hundred and thirty six. Okay. Uh, let's read the question first together. Uh, events A and B are such that probability A is given as 0 0.6, probability B is given as 0 0.7, and probability A union B 0 0.9, and then find probability B prime given A prime. Okay, B prime given A prime. Okay, so uh, first we need to do some uh, calculation first, okay, which does not involve much of the Venn diagram. So we have done this before. Okay. Uh, probability of A union B, we know its formula well by now. Okay, probability A plus probability B, and take away probability A intersect B. Okay, so by using other values, A union B is given as 0 0.9, A is given as 0 0.6, B 0 0.7, and we are left with A intersect B. Okay, so this will leave probability A intersect B as 0 0.4. Okay, 0 0.4. Okay, so now uh, with some of the information here, okay, we try to draw out our uh, band diagram. Okay, so probability A intersect B is 0 0.4. This is a crucial part. Always the intersection is always the crucial part. Okay. So now we are not dealing with numbers, we are dealing with probability. Okay, so we put 0 0.4 over here. Okay, so uh, another thing that we need to know is uh, if probability A union B is 0 0.9, that means this, uh, this particular circle plus this particular circle, okay, the total is 0 0.9. Anything outside the circle okay, will make up for the difference. Okay, to, make, to make sure that the whole thing becomes probability of 1. Okay? So if this is 0 0.9, the outside should be 0 0.1. Okay? A union B complement. Okay? The complement of A union B. Okay? Or A union B bracket 1. Okay? Right. Other things 
means that we need we can uh, plug in the predominance here probably is given at 0 0.6 so this is 0 0.6 but 0 0.4 has been taken up so we are left with 0 0.2 okay we have likewise uh, b is 0 0.7 over here okay and 0 0.4 has been taken up so 0 0.3 will be on this part okay so uh, after we plug in everything okay uh, let's try to make sense of the question Okay. The question wants us to find okay, from a theorem B prime given A prime. Okay, so I erase this first. Right. So what's the probability of B prime given A prime? Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, we are given A prime. Okay, that means we should only look at the set that is above A prime. Okay, so this is A. Anything outside this black circle or black oval okay, will be considered A prime. So that means this portion 0 0.3 is considered A prime. Okay, this portion 0 0.1, anything outside here, okay, is considered A prime as well. So now our a prime is actually 0 0.4. Okay, so our probability of uh, a prime is 0 0.4. So using the conditional probability, we know that we must divide by the condition. So we divide by probability a prime. So probability a prime is given as 0 0.4. Okay, but the one at the top, okay, we should consider uh, the probability that it is actually b prime. So now we forget about this particular circle. Just focus on this thing. Okay? Which one is B prime? Okay? This is B. So anything outside here is B prime. So we should only focus on this. Okay? So it's 0 0.1 over 0 0.4, which will give us 1 fourth. Okay? Or 0 0.25. Depends on how you want to represent it. Right? Okay, so uh, that's the last example. So you will just uh, go and try out the homework from exercise 17G okay, and that's the end of the lesson remember teachers don't just teach professionally teachers teach professionally